Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. This morning we do not begin with an illustration, a story, or even a quote. We begin our sermon today with a question. Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? It's Peter's question from our gospel text. And yet, it is still a question that we are asking today. How many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sin against me? The question is not a difficult question. It's really a human question that Peter is answering. And we want an answer to that question. How are we to forgive, or how many times are we to forgive those in our lives who continue to hurt us? Now, it seems that seven is a gracious number in which we should forgive those that hurt us over and over and over. To any of us who have been injured, maligned, spoken badly of, and mistreated by the same person over and over, It's a good question. You see, there comes a point when enough is enough. When we are tired of the same old antics. When we have come to the end of our rope and we come to the point of saying, I cannot forgive you any longer. I've forgiven you enough. And seven looks like a perfect number to forgive someone of their wrongdoings. But Jesus startles us with his answer. His answer to us is not seven times, but seventy, seven times. It was also startling to Peter as well, too. Peter lived in a culture where the rabbis and the religious leaders would say, you only need to forgive somebody three times. And after that, then you were okay to not forgive them. Peter is really gracious in his answer because he doubles it and he says, seven times, Lord. But Jesus doesn't double it. He multiplies it and says that it's not enough just to forgive somebody seven times, but 77 times. And then he begins with a parable. Now, we're probably familiar with this parable You know, Jesus taught in parables, didn't he? For the last few weeks, we have been hearing the parables of Jesus throughout our sermon series. We're done with that series, but again, we hear Jesus' parable. And a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. But those parables are meant to make us wrestle with God and to wrestle with what he is saying to us. And so there is a man, a king, who has a servant come up to him. We are told that he owes 10,000 talents. Now, according to the historians, it would take a day laborer working a 1,000 years to pay off this fine. And so the man knows that his life is in the balance. He cannot pay what he owes. It means that his family and children will be thrown and sold into a slave den or a debtor's prison. And there they will spend the rest of their days working down this debt that they will never be able to pay. And so the man falls on his knees, and he asks his king, King, be patient with me, please, and let me pay off my debt. The king has mercy upon this servant. And instead of being patient and giving him time to pay off his debt, he literally cancels it. The man receives mercy instead of justice for his debt. And then we're told that same servant goes out and he finds a fellow worker, a man who owes him a couple denarius. It's really about two or three weeks worth of labor, a paycheck or two to his neighbor. And yet that servant grabs him by the neck and says, you will pay me. That servant says, sir, have patience on me as well too. Instead of giving mercy, the gentleman gives him the debt, the justice of his debt, and throws him into prison until he can pay fully the debt that he owes. 
You know, whenever we pray the Lord's Prayer, we, are, we always pray the wording found in the Gospel of St. Luke. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. But it's the Matthew text that is quite interesting. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those our debtors. It's no coincidence then that Matthew in his gospel uses debts in the Lord's Prayer as well as in this parable. Those debts in which Jesus is speaking about are the moral debts, the debts of sin that we owe others and others owe us. But you now understand that the king in that parable is God and that we are like that servant who stands before a God who does not give us justice, but instead he gives us mercy. And he doesn't just give us time to pay off our debt. In Christ Jesus, he cancels the very debt that we owed God. The sin, the selfishness, the bitterness, all that we owe, the master forgives. He forgives it because of his graciousness toward us. Now, it's an interesting thing in our text. We hear that word patience. Jesus spoke about patience, but this is an Old Testament and a New Testament term. It speaks to the very character of God who gives mercy and waits for sinners to receive his forgiveness. It's a word that we as well, too, should understand. As God waits and forgives our sins. He is patient with us. Paul uses this when he speaks about his own mercy and the patience with God showed to him. We hear these words from 1 Timothy. Formerly I was a blasphemer, a persecutor, a violent man who killed Christians. But I have received mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ overflowed in me, and the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is true and worth full deserving acceptance, that Christ came into the world to save sinners like me, of whom I was the worst. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me the foremost of sinners, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who believe and are given eternal life. It is also hard, heard in our text for today, our liturgy, taken from the Psalm 103. As far as the east is from the west, so God removes our transgressions. It is mercy that we receive from this king. How many times have you asked for mercy? How many times have you asked, Father, forgive me? And how many times has God forgiven you? Every single time he has forgiven you. You see, he's not slow in keeping his promises, as some consider slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So how many times... Must I forgive my brother? How many times am I to forgive those that have done wrong to me? Must it only be seven times? No, 77 times. When God forgave you in Christ, did he put a limit on it? Did he say that's enough and no more? No, when God forgave you, he kept on forgiving you and you continue to receive his mercy. With those brothers and sisters who sin against us, what then are we to show them? We are Christians who are called to forgive and continue forgiving those people in our life who do us harm. Now I know that there is a double standard among us. We're like that servant those that we have done wrong to, we want to receive mercy. And those that have done wrong to us, we want justice. We want them to see what they get. But this double standard is reprehensible when it comes to the area of forgiveness. 
strange as it may, might, might sound, there are those who find fault, excuse me, who find no fault in the unmerciful servant. There are those who look at forgiving and being forgiven makes a person soft or a patsy for everyone. There are some that feel that refusing forgiveness, being steel-like and holding a grudge is okay. You see, the unmerciful servant to some are praised privately in their hearts, but not for the Lord. It is different to find a more severe punishment and judgment than all of Scripture. You see, here Jesus, the unmerciful servant, comes before the king, and there, instead of receiving mercy, we are told at the end of the parable, the king changes his mind and gives to that servant justice. Just listen to Jesus' words at the end of the par parable, and you understand. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you, unless you forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. It may be possible that we may think, Lord, what harsh words you have for us. The answer to that is yes, because think of how many times the Lord has forgiven you. Over and over, God has forgiven and shown mercy because of your sin. And instead of getting justice, you live in the mercy of the Lord. You see, God is not fooling around with the forgiveness that we extend then toward others. We are called to forgive them. Now I want to speak to those of you who are struggling with forgiveness. I understand that at times your lives have been exposed to people who do great harm and go through great events. You lose loved ones through uncircumstances. People who you thought loved you did great damage and hurt you. And you find it difficult to give forgiveness. The first thing I want to say is that we must understand that forgiveness is initiated by God. In Christ Jesus, we learn what forgiveness is and we experience the forgiveness of God. God forgave us first in Christ. It's undeserving, it's unmerited, and it's freely bestowed upon us. That's where forgiveness for the Christian begins. The second is I want to say that the decision to forgive and the internal emotions related with that harm that is done to us, that hurt, must be separated in our thinking. You see, the believer in Jesus may well have chosen to forgive a person, to release that person from debt. But the emotions, however, can still remain a lot longer until it gets on board with the heart. They are separate from each other. To forgive is, re is to release someone else from retribution and retaliation that they may deserve. It's something that only believers can do in Christ Jesus as we give over our forgiveness to God and let him work it out for us. That eternal emotion as well that we may feel toward those we hurt continually does not mean that we have not forgiven them. It just means that we still feel the hurt. You see, we are frail humans. We fail as God's creatures 100% of the time, and yet he continues to show us mercy. God forgives us and releases us from the sins that we still live in. Your debt has been free. Go now and forgive others and release them from their debt. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.